place. It is the final edition of the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. What a season we've had and a perfect way to wrap up. Greg Rust and Andrew Van Leeuwen joined by Roland Dane. If you've been following the Speed Cafe website during the year, you'll have seen his columns, Roland's View, and there's been some beauties of late, including one that summed up Brody Kostecki, his championship win, the character that, that he is. Welcome. Thank you for being here with us. That Absolutely. was tremendous, that yarn. Really, really yeah, good to share that you. story, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good story. I enjoyed doing it. Well, I enjoy writing the column anyway, because uh, the only thing that I was ever any good at at school was writing. So, um, People might not agree with the content, but generally speaking, I try to put a bit of uh, bit of effort into putting the column together from a from an English language point of view. And the um, the story about uh, about Brody was a pleasure as well because I'd sort of been around him quite a lot during that really hard period where he was just on the edge of supercars but hadn't quite got there and was still trying to make a name for himself and do all the yeah. things he, he needed to do to, to stay in the frame and in front of people's minds. Mm. You ended it by saying, and, and quite rightly, to, to remind us all in the sport that we sort of have this responsibility to share more of that story more, you know, on a broader basis, don't we? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most disappointing aspects of the last two years of the current supercars ownership um, situation is that the teams consciously decided almost three years ago that what we really needed was a marketing company running the sport. And like it was effectively with SEL, um, you know, a decade and a half ago. And we needed that sizzle to come back, etc. And part of that is selling the drivers. Mm. You know, when um, uh, Cochrane would would ring up a driver and say, I need you to be in a, in a VB commercial tomorrow or something, mm. get your ass down to Melbourne to, for some filming, those sort of things that went on. Um, and we're lacking that because that'll be what drives the Kostecki name or the Feeney name or the Brown name or the Ryan Wood name, etc., into the um, public psyche over the next few years. And that's, that's lacking right now. Mm. What do you think, looking forward, to next year, um, obviously, actually for starters, Triple Eight not winning. We've asked this of Jamie as well. You know, you you don't work here anymore. You're retired. You don't own the business, but you're still a Triple Eight man, surely. To some level, was it? Yeah, I mean, was it, it hard to watch the team not winning? Look, I look at it slightly differently now. I, I look at it from the point of view that, um, apart from one year. Triple H's finished first or second in the in the championship at, um, every year over the last twenty odd. So um, finished second and third, which is uh, most people would be very very happy with. Mm -hmm. um, so from a Triple H point of view, yeah, it's it's nice to win. I can tell you though that I think I also look at it now from a sport point of view uh more so than i would have done before when you're immersed at the coal face all you think about is yourself and your team as you should now stepping back from it i 100 percent think that um, having another team uh, a new driver etc win is a good thing mm. uh, there was a good scrap the um, nobody you know, nobody won by default brody had to to work for his win erebus had to work for their team's win as well so to be honest, overall, I see it as a positive for the sport, but to really make it into a positive, that's actually the job of supercars mm -hmm. as the, yeah. as the, um, <laughs> the race organizers and the promoters, they need to make something of that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess it's the same, not just with Brody, but with the team as well. Like it's quite a fascinating team story with Betty Clemenko and the investment she's made into supercars and into that team. You know, Barry Ryan is an interesting character. We all know that. Like, it is a good story for supercars if it's told right. Yeah, and, and look, it's a, it's a different story. Mm. It's a, yeah. So there are different stories all the way up and down pit lane. Um, and it's good to be able to tell a different story. I think the great thing about Triple Eight is that it's, the business and the team has been such a benchmark for almost two decades that anyone who gets up to that level mm. can actually very deservedly pat themselves on the back um, and, and, and make a fuss about it mm. because they, they absolutely deserve the accolades. So, uh, but that's, that's got to be taken out to a wider audience, not just 
in our world. In our circle, yeah. Mm. The, the parity argument isn't a new thing in, in our sport. It's, it's been around um, on many occasions with the introduction of new cars. Looking at it, looking how it's, it's played out, um, what we've ultimately gone to to try and resolve it, what, what do you think about that? Look, uh, I think that uh, fundamentally the, the problem has it's come about because, if I'm absolutely blunt about it, uh, 888 and KRE put more effort into it um, three years ago, two years ago, even a year ago, than the other side did. Now, <laughs> um, with, and it wasn't as though 888 and, and KRE had more money to do it with, it, <laughs> they just uh, got down and did the job. It's taken a long time for the other side, for the for Ford and DJR to actually catch up. And they, have they caught up now? I don't know. What I do know is that there's a reset taking place, hopefully on the aero side as we, uh, <laughs> as we uh, speak here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. here. And that should have a good outcome, I hope, because that is world's best practice. And everyone's got to understand that we're not trying to equalize teams. Not trying to equalize drivers. Mm. It's just a question of the equipment having the same capabilities. So hopefully that puts the lid on the, um, on the aero side very quickly. The engine side, there are characteristics between the two engines that are slightly different. different yeah. In the past, there have been other differences on cars that have masked that, for instance. I mean, don't forget that in 2014, we had a Volvo. We had a Nissan, we had a Mercedes, Mercedes yeah. as well as the two um, old school cars with pushrod engines. All these other cars had very different engines, right? I mean, the, the Volvo was effectively a Yamaha built, beautiful little V8 yeah. taken up to five liter. The Nissan engine, which Todd Kelly had to work with, was actually, a, a, I think, a 5.7 litre truck engine from, a, from America he had to take down with very different challenges. We all ended up in a very similar place. Were those engines more different then than the two are today? Almost certainly, yes. But there were other differences that sort of masked that as well. Mm. So the engines are very close. Can they get closer? I hope so. I personally, I would have, months ago, I would have taken a car from 888, a car from DJR, I would have gone to uh, Queensland Raceway with the, um, with the driveline dynos in, torque sensors in the cars. I would have put Stephen Richards as you know, a reasonably current um, history driver, uh, <laughs> very honest, straightforward person, and I would have put the, everyone to work with him and get the characteristics of the engines so that they were you know, within a, a, a gnat's whatnot of each other. Mm. And uh, I, per, I personally think you would, have, you would have achieved an outcome much quicker. Now we can see that Rob Herrod, who is a brilliant guy in the road car department, um, tuning world, has stepped away. It would have been great to have seen an independent uh, engine builder take his place rather than a team but hopefully now whatever engine issues there are on the Ford side are, are sorted out quickly and we can just park that matter and get on with with racing concentrate on things like a better tire things like a limited slip diff lowering minimum tire pressures things that can improve the racing product and have more side by side action because yeah. after all at the end of the day that's what we want yeah. but don't think this is about equalizing teams or drivers it hasn't been and it's not going to be and that's written into the rules let's assume that they have found technical parity over the uh, over the summer break while all the wind tunnel testing has been going on and the transient dyno work and all of that let's have a bit of a chat about the pecking order next year we know triple eight will be there or thereabouts because they always are can Erebus keep it up, do you think? Um, yeah, I, I think Erebus certainly uh, keep, will keep it up. Uh, it's, a, it's then a question of whether um, they're keeping it up there with both drivers, with Jack. Um, Jack's a good steerer. Is he at the level that, um, that Will has been this year, for instance? I'm not sure, any time will tell. Uh, with the, but I also see other 
youngsters coming coming along. I mean, I'm disappointed really there aren't more youngsters mm. out there. But Ryan Wood, uh, since Triple Eight tested him 18 months ago in a Super Two car at, at Queensland Raceway, I've been a fan. When Ryan um, drove that day, it was immediately obvious that he'd got the speed. Uh, I went along there to watch because you know Quinny had had arranged the the deal and um, wanted the feedback and I uh, spoke to Ryan afterwards um, and yeah he was he's quite cocky and everything etc and <laughs> sure of himself but that's a, that can be a good thing mm -hmm. and um, I said all you've got to do now mate is lose some weight and uh, but Scotty McLaughlin used to be in that position of needing to lose some weight and look at him today mm -hmm. you know and he's mm -hmm. built for IndyCar now and uh, Ryan will get there uh, but he's a great um, great young talent see coming through. I mean, Cooper Murray in the Triple Eight Wild Card next year. Things like that happening. I'd like to see more of it. Kai Allen should be in a car next year or in 2024. I'm sure he will be in 25, but it would have been nice to see him in a in a car in 24. There's plenty of brilliant talent out there, and there's a few seat blockers. Mm. So you know, if the Mustang is competitive, what about say like a streamlined Tickford outfit with Cam Waters and Tommy Randall, could they be sort of contenders next year, do you think? Yeah, I mean, Cam uh, Cam always is. It has been for three or four years, a contender for sure. Um, Thomas Randall has shown more recently uh, that he can. I suspect it'll help the team, only running two cars. Uh, running four cars uh, is hard. Running three cars is hard. Uh, so I think it, more focus. Uh, for them on two cars will probably probably help them. Depends how their management's set up now and who the key people are there yeah. and, and the engineering group. Uh, but um, I, I would tend to think that it'll help them. Well, it, surprise probably isn't the right word here. Who, who's the outfit that you think will, on a more regular basis, be a part of the mix here? My question's a little bit loaded. Is that Groves? Yes, it is Groves. And yeah. un, un, unquestionably. I mm. mean, I've said it for uh, for almost two years, you know, just give it time mm. and uh, having the right people in, in the right place and it will be, will be Groves. Now, there are some very good people there who have been to university at Triple Eight. <laughs> um, and and he's called Triple Eight South <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> but there are some very good people there and they know what, what it takes to make a, a winning team tick. Uh, their driver lineup, uh, you know, with Matty Payne, I don't, I don't know Matty, but I've you know, watched him for a little while, and for sure he's uh, a major talent. But Richie Stanaway is also a major talent. I, I really like Richie. I worked with him uh, during 2023 on GTs in Asia and Australia, and uh, it's great. Um, he's getting a second chance. Yeah, yeah really, 100 percent. Mm -hmm. And you know, our our old friend uh, Greg Murphy is very responsible for. Um, for that and um, helping Richie during COVID and mm. bringing him out of mm. it and, and putting him back on the map. Uh, and that, for, for me, that all started actually with talking to Murph in, on a um, boys weekend in Queenstown in September 22. And then, and Murph telling me, you know, pay attention to, to, to Richie at, at Bathurst in the wildcard. And then I was running the the Super door, Kachi, well, yeah, yeah, wild card. So yeah. we were together, and I said that evening, coming out of that uh, weekend, I said to Shane and Jamie, if Garth goes off and does television, I didn't know he'd go off to Groves, but if he goes off and does television, get Richie ASAP in with um, with Shane for next year. Yeah. He'll be good, and so and that's what happened. Um, so th that team, very good driver lineup, personnel. Uh, that, that I know, very good. They understand it. I think the, the key will be um, Stephen Grove um, investing in it, which he's not scared of at all, but then allowing the, the racing people to run the race team. Because Stephen, is a, he's a very good amateur racer, um, et cetera, but he's not a motor racing person from the ground up. Yeah, there's a, um, he's, he hasn't 
he hasn't worked in it all his life. He's, he's been massively successful by not working in motor racing all his life. He's, done a, uh, he's got a great business in mm. Grove Hire. But he has to allow the professionals to run the team. And I hope that w that's what happens because they will, for me, undoubtedly be the main force for Triple Eight and Erebus to have to fight with next year. Can I just come back to Richie you know, for one moment. We discussed on another episode of the Summer Grill, you know, about the fact that his talent is unquestionable, but there were question marks over his attitude and mentality and stuff. Having worked with him last year closely, has he reached, it feels like he's reached the point where he's ready to do this. Do you feel the same? Uh, absolutely, I do. I mean, Richie, he's been an enigma for many years. Mm. And he won't mind me saying mm. so. Yeah. I mean, I heard all the stories from from Europe about the ups and downs of his career over there, you know, because of a lot of um, of mutual connections and everything. And while I didn't know Richie, um, I heard I heard all the stories or enough of them to to wonder, uh, guys, quick, but you know, is he going to ever be able to be anything more than just mm. a, a guy who's quick? He came to Australia. Um, he clearly had a bit of a a hard time at the two teams he was with, with Tickford and, and GRM, and it didn't end well. Uh, but uh, once I saw him at Bathurst, you know, 18 months ago, whenever in the- He was totally uh, reinvigorated, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was a, a, a new man. I mean, he, don't get me wrong, he's never going to be the outgoing bloke in, yeah. the, in the team. He's yeah. never going to be your, your lead person from that point of view. Yeah, he's, he's fundamentally quite pretty shy, hmm. right? Uh, but he's a very, very good driver, and he's a very, very good person to have in a in a race team and to operate with. So uh, I'm a I'm a massive Richie fan. Mm. We're recording this during the festive season. Kind of put your Santa cap on for us for a moment. Mm. What would your 24 wish list be? What, what, what would you want to see achieved? That could be across anything. Oh, uh, I want to win the 12R mm -hmm. um, because I'll I'll run a car there. Uh, and I love the 12R. Um, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see on a on a local level in Australia, that Motorsport Australia is reinvigorated under the new CEO there, uh, Sunil Vokra, and um, that they've then become proactive in trying to improve the sport for everyone from the grassroots, because that's their. That's really who they report to. That's the, the shareholders effectively, you know, the membership base um, for them, and they need to do a better job of looking after everyone from grassroots up to supercars level. Uh, be a big tick. Um, I think the, uh, the opportunities that are there with GT3 and GT4 next year in Australia in 2024 uh, are great. Hopefully they take advantage of the vacuum that's been created at some of the circuits and the calendar by supercars and fill those to give people um, great opportunity to go and watch good motor racing um, at, at some of the other circuits that supercars not not going to go to mm. and fill some of those weekends as well on from a, a viewer point of view i think those will be big ticks uh, I, I just take it for granted maybe incorrectly but Parity would just go away and, and not be an issue other than for people who don't recognise their own particular teams not doing a good enough job. Mm -hmm. um, but for the majority of us, that'll be parked, I hope. And, um, and then I hope supercars will use next year as a springboard for 25 to give the sport the calendar it deserves and, and the tweaks to the racing that it deserves to to re-establish supercars as the as the premier category, but with a a big future leading into a new television deal. Mm. That's what that's what I'd like to see happening, but only after I've won the 12R. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah. I think we're done. It's been fabulous to sit and, and chat with you about motorsport more broadly. Okay. Can we can we are you bored? Do you want to do something else? Are you okay on the on the sidelines here, so to speak? <laughs> Oh, in, 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 of the sport? In, of the sport. You know, not, I mean, I, I feel like you're the kind of person who would have itchy feet. Is there I want a him project? focusing on his column, thanks. Yeah, no, don't I know, give, no, don't give him any other ideas. No, 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 I, I enjoy what I'm doing at the moment. I mean, it, you know, we don't touch on here, but I'm, I'm chairman of uh, PWR, 
which is one of the most exciting uh, companies in Australia. Right, yeah. And uh, not only are we massively involved in motorsport around the world, but also increasingly other areas, such as aerospace and, mm -hmm. and defense. And uh, yeah. to be a part of a team that's creating the amount of um, intellectual property that's going on uh, there on the Gold Coast at, uh, at Ormo um, on a regular basis, to be a part of that uh, is fascinating. Mm. And to be able to play a part in that uh, growth of that company in the UK with a factory uh, near Rugby now, as well as the one in Indianapolis, is something that uh, honestly I feel privileged to be involved with and uh, get a great deal out of. So with that, plus motor racing, plus yeah, being able to go fishing when I want. <laughs> but, I'm pretty happy. Lots good, lots yeah. good. We wish you all the best for 2024. And indeed to everybody at Triple Eight here as well. It's been um, a joy for us to come and record a couple of episodes here. So thank you to the staff for having us. Thank you to all of you for watching as well. And especially to our partner across the Summer Grill series in KTM. That is it for this year. Congratulations to all of you who have been winners of our competition as well. And we can't wait for the 24 season to start. You could be a winner each episode of the Summer Grill. KTM are giving you the chance to win a bar stool, a mug, and this race-inspired clock as well. So there's more good reasons to tune in and hear from some of the stars of world motorsport here as a part of the KTM Summer Grill. All you've got to do is click on the link below, fill in your details, and you could be in the running to win.